Okay, so here we are at the next video. Part two of the vector lesson is we're going uh, is how to derive formulas for these conversions. Now, uh, as you probably know from my teaching style, it's a little unusual for me to do derivations, but in this case, the derivations actually do pay off a little bit. They do help you understand how to use the formulas themselves. The most important computation you're going to have to do for vectors is converting from magnitude and direction to components, to x and y components, and doing the the reverse of that. And unfortunately, this is one of those uh, one of those branches of mathematics where reversing an operation requires a comp uh, re reversing something conceptually requires a completely different set of formulas. So we're going to go from magnitude. and direction to components, x components, x component, and a y component. And we're also going to learn to go in the opposite direction. Each of these ways of representing a vector has its own advantages. Magnitude and direction, you know, we'll talk a little bit about why we have these two different methods of, um, of representing vectors. Magnitude and direction are easy to measure. So most of the time when we get a measurement from a measuring instrument, it's going to tell us either magnitude or direction, or in the case of some particularly sophisticated measuring devices, it'll tell us both at the same time. X and Y components are typically more difficult to measure, but they, uh, but, but getting back to what we were talking about in the last video, components are what allow us to take a two-dimensional or diagonal vector and break it into two one-dimensional vectors that we can in turn use our one-dimensional knowledge, our you know, sum of all forces in the x direction, sum of all forces in the y direction. We can use that on the components, but not on the magnitude and direction. So the components are much better or are really our only option for use in formulas. Okay, so that's a little bit about why we have these two methods for representing vectors. Let's get back into the trigonometry. We have this vit diagram from our last video, and it's, uh, it's still pretty useful, so I'm just going to stick with it. Like I said in the, at the end of our last video, all of the trigonometry that you learned in your, um, in your algebra classes also applies to vectors. So any formula that you can derive will be, uh, from good trigonometry will be, uh, will be useful, but there's a few particular, uh, there's a particular subset of formulas that will pretty much always get you what I expect you to do in this class. Now remember, we're either going to know magnitude and direction, and we're going to have to calculate the components, or we're going to know the components, and we're going to have to calculate magnitude and direction. Magnitude being the length of the hypotenuse here, direction being the number of degrees rotated counterclockwise from the x direction. So you're probably all familiar with SOHCAHTOA, and we're going to start with this as a basic principle. If we start with the definition of sine, sine of the direction of B is going to be, it's going to be the opposite side, which is going to be BY over the hypotenuse, which is the magnitude of B.
Now, looking at this formula, we have magnitude and we have direction. And we have one of the two components. We have the y component here. And just to save ourselves a little bit of time in the future, again, we'll probably know magnitude and direction and be asked to calculate a component, or we'll know both components and we'll be asked to calculate magnitude and direction. This formula is only useful if you know both magnitude and direction. In other words, if you have these two knowns and you're asked to find uh, that unknown. So let's just get our knowns on one side and our unknown on the other side. Multiply both sides by the magnitude of B. Okay, and you end up with this formula. This is a particularly useful formula. I'll close it in a red box and it'll show up on a formula sheet on a, uh, on a later page. All right, now let's give the cosine function the same treatment. Cosine of the direction of B is going to equal the adjacent side. Okay, so if this is our angle, BX is adjacent to the angle divided by the hypotenuse. And again, the hypotenuse is the magnitude of B. All right, so again, we're going to know magnitude and direction. So we'll know that and we'll know that. And let's get our knowns grouped together on the same side here. So multiply both sides by the magnitude of B again, and you end up with your second exceedingly useful formula bx is equal to magnitude of b times the cosine of the direction. Again, this is useful enough that I'm going to enclose it in a box and it will show up as a uh, on a formula sheet a little later. All right, so these are the formulas you use to convert from magnitude and direction to components. We got one formula for the y component, one formula for the x component. Everything should be hunky-dory there. It's a pretty straightforward conversion. Now, let's look at how to convert from components back to magnitude and direction. In other words, if I know bx and I know by, how do I get the magnitude and direction of b? All right, the magnitude part you've probably already guessed. Magnitude is a hypotenuse. x and y components are the legs. So in order to get the length of the hypotenuse, you can just apply the Pythagorean theorem. So the magnitude of B is going to equal BX squared plus BY squared. Oh, whoops, forgot to square magnitude. All right, so this is C squared equals A squared plus B squared. You're probably used to seeing it. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, but flip the stuff around in, a, uh, in an e e equal sign, and you get the same formula. Now, again, we're go usually going to be solving for magnitude of b, not magnitude of b squared. So let's just go ahead, and as we're making our generic formulas, take the square root. And do that. Now, Magnitudes and absolute values share uh, share a lot of the, the a lot of similar concepts. So magnitude is the two dimensional distance from the origin to the head of a vector when the vector is in standard position. In other words, it is the distance from the origin. Now, if you dust off your Algebra One textbook and look up absolute value, you'll find that absolute value is the distance from origin on a one-dimensional graph. So really, magnitude is just the two-dimensional version of absolute value. And, so, and that's why they share the same sign. They also share another property, and that is that both absolute values and magnitudes are always positive. So that's why I didn't put the plus or minus sign in front of the b, uh, in front of the square root here, even though 
when you do a square root, you should at least think about whether you want the uh, positive or negative result. In this case, we always want the positive result because magnitudes are always positive. Okay, so that's one of our formulas. Now the last formula to get from components back to magnitude and direction is a little bit of a tough one. And it relies on our last Sokotoa relationship, namely the tangent function. Okay. The tangent function, uh, well, let me get into the mathematics and then I will explain to you in a little bit more detail why this is a bit of a complicated conversion. All right, so if we look at the tangent function, tangent of theta, or the direction of b, if you prefer, uh, tangent of theta is going to be the same thing as the opposite over the adjacent. So that's going to be b y over b x. All right, so if we know the two components and we're trying to find the direction, then all we have to do is apply a function that gets rid of the tangent, and that function that gets rid of tangent is the inverse tangent, otherwise known as the arc tangent function. So that looks like that, and it's going to get a little messy in here. Okay, so under most circumstances, or under at least some circumstances, the tangent function and the arctangent function cancel each other out, and so we are left with theta equals arctangent of y component over the x component. Okay, and this works under some circumstances, and the circumstances under it works under which it works. Uh, relates back to the arc tangent function. If you dust off your Algebra 2 book and look up your inverse trig functions, you'll find that arc tangent does not give you every possible angle. It only gives you angles from negative 90 degrees to positive 90 degrees. So, in other words, uh, where's my protractor? I guess I don't need a protractor. All right, so in other words, it only gives us angles in this arc over here. Okay, we got from 0 to negative 90, and again from 0 to positive 90. Remember, counterclockwise is positive, clockwise is negative. What if we have vectors that point out here or over here? In other words, in the third or, uh, sorry, second or third quadrant. Well, in that case, we need to apply a correction to the arctangent function. And that correction consists of adding 180 degrees. So theta is going to be the arctangent of by over bx plus 180 degrees. Okay? So you use this top function to go from components to direction if your vector points somewhere over here. Use this function if your vector points somewhere over here. How do you know the difference? Well, if you look at all the x values over here, these are all negative x values. So if x is less than 0, then you do the arc tangent with the 180 degree correction. And if x is greater than or equal to 0, then you can just use the arc tangent function all by itself. So this last, uh, some, sometimes you can consider it one equation, sometimes you can consider it two equations. That's, um, that's the last equation we need in order to convert to, uh, from magnitude and direction to x and y components, or from x and y components back to magnitude and direction.
Okay, so these four formulas are all you need.